we revert to a populist view of Africa and her people. Hmm. Uh, that's the one that we have a question. Uh, I think that th this question. So what can be done to revert? To, to revert. Populist view of Africa, the people have no indigenous culture and spiritual to Kenya. So it's a populist view. view. Oh, revert is being used here. See, this, that's not good American English, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, this is really simply a matter of, of, of rehearsal. It is a matter of emphasizing those texts and those books and doing good new scholarship that reinforce the perspective that you know, Egypt is indeed a part of the African world. Now, when you talk about a link, you have to be careful about links. I mean, direct links, less direct links, and what have you. For me, the African world is this wondrous, very diverse thing, just like the Asian world is. I, the African world may actually be more interconnected in some very surprising ways. Uh, during the Middle Ages, uh, there was all sorts of trade back and forth. Uh, uh, in more ancient times, there was clearly a sharing of, of, of certain kinds of animals and technology, and I would dare say there's a world view. I mean, when one looks at, for example, some of the ideas that one sees in ancient Egypt, uh, one is not looking at Mesopotamia, one is not looking at Greece, one is looking at something that is homegrown right there. And previous Egyptologists and another generation actually saw these connections uh, uh, in terms of, of Afri uh, Egypt's embeddedness in Africa. Why this change is something that uh, we can take a look at. Uh, uh, how much is related to ideology, how much is related to people simply not being interested uh, anymore or deciding, well, that's not an interesting topic. In other words, academic fads, it's hard to say. But I will say this. Anybody that wants to talk about ancient Africa from the ancient Sahara on, the Carthaginians, the ancient Egyptians, the Numidians, uh, people from the Hausa states, Mali, Ghana, Songhai, the Luba kingdoms, the Sotho Kingdoms, Great Zimbabwe, ancient Aksum, you know, the genesis of the Somali people, the genesis of Nubia, it means you got to go do some work. You know, can't, we, people who are interested in these things, you can't keep citing old books. We need new scholars, new people, and it means going to school for a long time. You know, period. There's no way around that. Historical linguistics takes a lot of effort, but it's really worth it. It's a very interesting feel. Uh, genetics is going to be the thing that tells you the least, actually. People think there's so much that you get, you know, from, you know, genetics. Not really. You, you get some things, but, you know, history, culture, archaeology is going to be uh, where you get uh, a lot more information that's of cultural interest. The largely Caucasian academic reluctance to accept the African ethnicity of ancient and indeed modern day Egyptians appears to be based less on established evidence and more inherently racist notions of African inferiority, which in their minds rendered them incapable of being the cultural originators of Egypt. Does this therefore suggest that African scholars should simply not engage in debating and proving anything to the Caucasian world and simply focus on establishing meaning, interpretation, application, and current day relevance of ancient African knowledge? Uh, absolutely, the African world has to do its own research, whether that African world is in Nigeria or in Brazil or in Mississippi in the United States or in Liverpool. Uh, on the other hand, there are standards of excellence that have to be applied in scholarship. You just don't stand up and say anything you want, and that goes also for the Eurocentrist. Now, I view myself as a critical uh, uh, a researcher. I don't call myself an Afrocentrist or a Eurocentrist. There's a way to handle information to make arguments, and sometimes things are ambiguous. You know, everything doesn't come out clean, you know, and sometimes things have multiple origins, and that's also true, and that's just a reality. Uh, so uh, the, the, the reluctance of academia uh, is, is a reluctance, I would say, based in the colonial past, and yes, it is based in a uh, kind of racism on the part of some people. However, on parts of other people, they, they feel that they have evidence that uh, controverts uh, this because they have an idea that African means one thing. You know, and so that's a fundamental problem of knowledge. So like saying that Asian means one thing. Are the people from southern India, the Dravidians, are they Asians? Are people from Japan, northern Japan, who may be very fair-skinned, or Siberians, Asians? Are Iranians Asians? All of those people are Asians. 
They're all Asians. They all emerged in Asia. They all speak languages that emerged in Asia. And they all practice culture that emerged in Asia. So they're all Asians. Do they all look alike? No, they don't. Is their culture all the same? No, it isn't. That's what you have to understand. You have to be able to get your arms around that. Are all Europeans the same? You know, sometimes we think they are, but are they? Oh, there's some surprises there, too. Uh, how is someone qualified to identify the race of the Egyptians from statues? Well, uh, that question has no real answer. Uh, whether or not statues, once again, accurately depict the people uh, that they represent is a very interesting question. Now, I have a slide, but unfortunately I don't have it with me. Well, I have it with me, but I don't have it there. Of, of some individuals who were depicted with little statues. And then when they reconstructed their bodies, and this is from southern Egypt, the people looked totally different from the statues. The statues had them looking, uh, let's say, stereotypically, say, what we might think of northern Egyptians. But when they actually reconstructed the people uh, from their mummies, I mean, from their, their skeletons, and they did sort of forensic type analysis, the people looked just for what you might expect from from Upper Egypt. I mean, they had different kind of set of facial features that uh, some people would say are, quote, more African. Although, as I want to point out, that the Somali with a nose narrower than the Swedes and uh, a certain kind of facial profile is just as African as Kwame Nkrumah or, uh, you know, Sidney Poitier, you know, what have you. A geologist said that the Sphinx is much older than generally thought. Can the skeletal remains of those who made the pyramids be dated? Were they African? Okay, so lots of questions here. Uh, yes, uh, somebody did say that the Sphinx is much older. That point of view has not been well accepted. I don't know to what degree that's ideology, people not wanting to accept it as a possibility. Somebody's asking for a paradigm shift, a revolution in ideas, and uh, other people are saying no. Uh, I don't know how good that evidence is. I can't read it and don't know where the state of that is at this time. Can the skeletal remains of those who made the pyramids be dated? Yes, they can with radiocarbon dating, although uh, I don't know that that's been done. Were they African people? Yes, they were African people. Again, that doesn't mean that they had any one particular set of physical traits, you know, but they were African people. The, any ideas that the people who built the pyramids came from Mars or came from, uh, you know, Babylonia can be simply dismissed. Are there any questions? I'm at the end of that section. So you think 